And I, you know, a lot of people thought he'd walk quite right in the years. Because he used to wander all over the countryside, and everywhere he went, he used to own this simple little tune to himself. It was simple, but it was very catchy. And it went something like this. Tiddly tom, tiddly tom, tiddly tee tee tee. Tiddly tom, tiddly tom, tiddly tee tee tee. Now, what you, I mean, you can appreciate that's a very catchy tune, go ahead. Yes. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. Because that's your a bit. We won't do a rehearsal, being as you're so confident. We'll just get straight into it, shall we? So there he was, wandering across the countryside. Wonderful. I don't think we cope without the choir, but there we are. Anyway, and on his way, he was picking nuts and berries for when he got hungry. And eventually, well, he got hungry. So he sat down and he laid all his nuts and his berries out. And the one nut was much larger and shinier. It was an absolute beaut in all the rest, you know. And he put that one side, he thought, I'll keep that till last. But when he did let all the other berries and nuts, he picked this nut up and he was just about to bite into it. And then he saw it. There was a big grub hole in it. Ah, oh, he thought, well, and he started thinking, he thought, I wonder if the grub's still in there. And then he remembered a story that he'd heard as he, on his wanderings about anglers in a certain part of the country and how they collect grubs for the, the bait by knocking <coughs> steel pins into the ground and tapping out a tube and the grubs come up. And he thought, I wonder whether that would work with my little tune. So he opened it up. And we went tiddly tom, tiddly tom, tiddly tee tee tee, tiddly tom, tiddly tom, tiddly tee tee. Nothing. So we did it again. Tiddly tom, tiddly tom, tiddly tee tee, tiddly tom, tiddly tom, tiddly tee tee. And sure enough, his head poked his head out and he wiggled out and he fell to the floor. When he looked down. And it had gone, it had scurried under the leaves. All he could see was leaves and twigs. And he, he spotted this twig. And for some reason he picked it up. And he poked it in the hole. And it was a perfect fit. I mean, it could have been engineered in a black country workshop, you know what I mean? It was a, you know, perfect. And this, you know, it, it intrigued him really. So he put the nut and the twig in his pocket. And then off he went, across the fields again. Tiddly tom, tiddly tom, tiddly tee 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 Anyway, and then he come, now he come to a gate. And he opened the gate and he went through it. And he was just about to shut the gate, you know. Obeying the countryside code. And something caught his eye. He wasn't sure whether he'd seen it at first, then he looked again. And sure enough, there, lying on the grass, was this little bloke. Green he was, from head to foot, apart from his eyes, and then were bright red. His horns were a funny colour as well, and he got a peculiar tail. And uh, I says, you're all right, mate. And the bloke jumped up. He says, all right, mate. He says, who do you think you're talking to? He said, do you know who I am? He said, well, I think guess I'll say you was the devil. He says, that's right. He said, and you should show me some respect. And I says, I come from the black country. In the black country, you have to earn respect without just dish it out willy-nilly. And at that, the devil said, well, I'll teach you a lesson. And he breathed in, and up he went bigger and bigger, and seven foot tall, and there was... There was smoke coming out of his nose, there was sparks coming off his tail. He said, no, will you? He said, no, he says, I am in mean this. So he breathed in again and he was ten foot tall and really menacing. He said, will you show me some respect now? 
He says, no, he says, what you're doing? He says, there's nothing to it. You're not just getting bigger. Everything gets bigger, though. I mean, a little baby. You know, it's, it's small when it's born, and then it just grows bigger and bigger. You know, if you can do something clever, really clever, then I might, you know, show you a bit of respect. He says, well, what you call clever? He says, well, the opposite. He says, instead of getting big, can you get small? And then that he breathed out, and he was only the size of a little terrier but dog, you know. And I says, that ain't small. He says, in the black country, we've got engineers who were to a thousandth of an inch. We're talking about something tiny. And he took the nut out of his pocket. He said, now if you could make yourself that small, you could get into that hole. Then, you know, I might think that was clever. Well, the devil jumped up onto this rock. And he breathed out again. And down and down he went. And he was only the size of an ant. Now, like, reached the nut down and the devil jumped in. Soon as he did, I like, put that trigger out and put it in the hole. And he shoved it in his pocket. And off he went across the countryside. Tiddly tum, tiddly tum, tiddly tee tee tee, tiddly tum, tiddly tum, tiddly tee tee tee. You forgot then, did not you? <laughs> anyway, a few times on the way, he put his hand in his pocket and he could feel this intense heat coming from this nut. And then he got to this village. In the village, there was a smithy's forge. And on this, across the top of the forge it had got this sign and it read the strongest blacksmith in England and above the door there's this huge hammer for you know advertising purposes obviously it had been made out of an old anvil there it was and the anvil was an old tree the trunk of an old tree and it was hung over the door so in he went to the forge and there was the blacksmith now, girls, I've got to tell you about this bloke. I mean, he was he lightly covered in sweat in front of his forge, you know. He got the biceps and he got the pecs, he got the six back. I mean, he was ugly as sin, but, well, you girls, you know, you, you don't get everything, do you? And, <laughs> and anyway. Do you want to rich? Good question. Anyway, I like. I like the system, which is. Uh, that's all right, that's all right, says Young, the strongest blacksmith in England. He said, oh, that's all right. He said, well, I've got a little job for you. He said, what's that? And he took a note out of his pocket and he placed it on his own thing. He says, crack that for us, will you? Said, oh, yeah. He says, Young from the black country, are you? He says, oh. He says, oh, I'm coming here, taking the mickey. So he went in the back. To his living court, he come out with one little toffee hammers, you know the silver toffee hammers used to get the slabs of toffee. And he went over and he just gave it a flick with his wrist. Bang! Not a mark on that. Quick as a flash, he picked his hat, bigger hammer up, the one he used when he's shoeing horses, and he lifted the hammer up and he bang! Not a mark. He went over to the corner and he picked up a 14 pound sledgehammer. Now, this is a man's tool. He come back, and he lifted it up, down he come, and there was still not a mark on that side. Well, he was going to be down here, so right. So he went out and he got the big hammer from over the door, and he come in, and he swung it right from back here, brought it right the way down, and bang! There was an explosion, the nut shattered, and all the particles of that nut was dragged into the forge and went off up the chimney. And all the particles latched onto the white clouds. It was a beautiful day, blue skies and just fluffy white clouds. Now, and those people out all over England enjoying the weather. You know, those people on the beaches, those people in the country, in the parks and everything. And all of a sudden, the clouds went dark. And then people that all looked up and this little spots of rain started to fall. Now a few people who got their mouths open, a spot of rain just went into the mouth. From that day on, then people could never tell the truth. Now, actually there was a, 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 
um, an American president to be in this country at the time he was at university. And he, he actually got impeached by, for telling fibs to the Senate or whatever it is, the, you know, Congress. So you can tell how these things work. So what happened to all these people? Well, most of them went into politics. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Some of them become estate agents. <laughs> Some of them made a very good living selling second-hand cars. <laughs> and then a few of them, the chosen few I like to think of, became storytellers. So the next time you're listening to a storyteller, and you look at that person, he or she, and you think, always thought what a truthful person they were. Don't be taken in. So <laughs> <laughs> Good story.